Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, thanks for your time today. Uh, today is a very special class that we're going to do, and I hope it impacts you the way it's impacted me and it's impacted thousands of our patients and people that we've worked with over the last couple of years. You see, while a diet is important, everyone knows they should exercise, sleep well, look after their emotional health. Emotional health is at the top of the paradigm. Today, most people are stressed out. Okay, and we can blame it on people, we can blame it on events, we can blame it on shortcomings in life, we can hold on to, you know, things that people have said, I know forgiveness is difficult, but it's not impossible, but all of these are things that we've noticed over the last couple of years that comes in the way of, you know, people's healing and recovery. We're not just going to talk about an aspect from, uh, from an aspect of health today, what we're also going to talk, let me just shut this What we're also going to talk about is different spheres in your life on how you should and draw boundaries. Now, who is this class for today? Everyone, everyone, because everyone is struggling in some way or the other with stress or they're struggling with anxiety or there are people who are successful, but yet they feel empty within. There are people who just don't know how to be happy. There are people who feel used all the time. They feel walked over. They feel like they're doormats in relationships. They feel that someone is dominating them in their relationships. Today, we need to learn how to reclaim that power back. And can we do it? Absolutely, yes. Does it come with a consequence? Absolutely, yes, as well. So the whole point is understanding, you know, that we own our inner peace. And while it's easy to say this and difficult to practice, it isn't difficult when we learn to draw boundaries. Now, why do we draw boundaries? What are boundaries? When you have a property, it's marked by a wall, a boundary to show that that is your personal space. You know, you don't allow other people to come into your personal space if you don't want them to. So we draw boundaries in life in many, many ways. There are boundaries on roads, there are boundaries at construction sites, there are boundaries in many, many different ways. So boundaries, when you look at boundaries, you know, on the roads, you can't go on a particular part of the road that is marked off boundary. So there are boundaries everywhere to protect personal space or to protect you. Now, when we find ourselves in life today constantly reacting to life, you know, constantly feeling bad, constantly trying to please people all the time, trying to make people happy because we want to feel loved or we want to feel cared for or we want attention, we want acknowledgement all of the time. And when we get it, we're all happy. But when we don't get it, we start to get negative, we start to get bitter, we start to get resentful. All the negative emotions that basically rob us of life, health, memories, the good things that we have, we forget about them because we're so focused with the negative thoughts and negative emotions like guilt, like, you know, feeling bad, resentment, all that we spoke about. So I made a lot of points today. My class is always more experiential where, yes, we are going to do a couple of exercises together, but there are a lot of reflective questions. I wish I could open this up to people to even answer and ask questions. We may do that at the end and select three or four because we've had about 3,000 people who have registered for the session. But um, number one, do you feel that you are burning out by trying to keep people happy? You may want to write down this question or listen to this later. Okay, these are questions we learn through reflection. I can sit here and tell you to do 10 things. But it's always through reflection that we learn because none of us have the time to reflect. We're just living each day as it comes. And then at some point, life has to bring up our past. Life has to bring up the things that we've suppressed within us. I've seen this in people at the age of 80, 85, 90. Whatever they've suppressed over the years has to finally come out. Sometimes it comes out in disease. Sometimes it comes out in anger. Sometimes it comes out in regret. It's difficult, but you've got to remember one thing in life. Whatever you suppress has to come out. So whether you speak to someone, you write about it, you talk about it, whatever it is, or you reflect on it and you address it, even at your own level. But remember one thing in life, whatever you suppress has to come out. Whatever you push down deep in your heart, deep in your body has to come out at some point. So first, do you think that you're burning out trying to keep people happy, trying to keep your spouse happy? trying to keep your kids happy or kids trying to keep their parents happy. Today's session is for everyone. It's for kids, for teenagers, for the elderly, for everyone, because all of us have to learn how to draw boundaries, even children, even parents, whoever you are, whatever you may have, you have to learn how to draw boundaries. If you want to protect your personal space, if you want to boost your self-esteem, your self-confidence, if you want to stop feeling like a doormat, 
If you want to stop, stop having people walk all over you, we have to draw boundaries. So do you feel yourself burning out trying to keep people happy? Keep your boss happy, keep your colleagues happy, keep everyone happy around you. You know, do you allow people to walk all over you because you're afraid to stand up? If you don't stand up for something, people walk all over you. Yet, why? Why do you feel that resistance when it comes to standing up for what you believe is right or how you believe you should be treated? These are questions for you to reflect on. Where does that resistance come from? We all respect people who stand up for what is right. We look at them in awe. We call them leaders. We call them leading from the front. We say, wow, I wish I had his or her guts to stand up. And they do it. But what stops us from doing it? Reflect, write down these questions. We're usually afraid to say no to people or stand up because we're afraid that we'll hurt them, that they will hurt us. We want to avoid tension. We want to avoid confrontation. We feel they want like us. This is one of the biggest things. We have this limiting mindset that everyone should like us. So we're trying to please everyone. And in that process, we forget to give importance to the people who really, really care about us and love us because we're so busy trying to get the rest of the world to like us. You will never be liked by everyone. It's impossible. It's impossible. And I'm saying this based on the history that you study. When we have ionic figures like Mother Teresa, we have religious leaders, we have people who have done fabulous work across the world, and yet they have their haters. They have their own set of people who will pull them down. And so when you look at that, the best of the best that comes to your mind. You may want to do some research on social media and Google and, what, and you'll find they have their set of haters. So you can't change other people. And if you're, you're going to waste an entire lifetime if you think you can please everyone. You're going to waste an entire lifetime if you think you can win the love of everyone and win the respect of everyone. Number one, you don't have to. The world's too big. The world's too big and life is too short. There are billions and billions of people in the world. Just imagine the amount of energy that you're going to drain if you're trying to be liked all the time. That's why a lot of social media influencers, a lot of comedians, actors have committed suicide over the past because they reach a point where they want to be liked and loved by everyone, but it's, the truth is they're not, and they can't handle it. They can't handle it. There are people who wake up every single morning checking the number of likes or dislikes, and they look for negative comments, and it destroys them. How do I know this? Because these people come to us. They come to us. They've not drawn boundaries and defined who is important to them, how they should be treated, what they should let go of, what they should accept. If you don't know that, everyone else walks all over you. So there are boundaries that we have to learn to draw all the time. When we learn to draw boundaries today, there are a couple of rules that we'll also learn. We can always be kind. We can be assertive, but we must be firm. There's nothing wrong with being firm. When we, when that spouse in a relationship wants to stand up and say, enough is enough, treat me with respect, they don't know how to say it. They don't say it with firmness and assertiveness. Some like to use emotional blackmail. Some like to bring up the past. Some like to give silent treatment. These are all very negative behaviors which don't serve you or doesn't serve a behavior change in your partner. The same thing with a boss and a colleague, friends, children and parents, parents and children. It's the same thing. We use negative emotions. We use blackmail to try to change a person. We use subtle threats. You know, we try to use power that I am so and so, you better listen to me. We try to use power to control people that I'll, I'll stop paying your salary. I'll make sure that you don't get an increment. These are power plays of weak people. Now being a weak person is not a bad thing unless you're continuing to continue with weak behavior. Weak have the ability to get strong through practice, through learning. So we always have the ability to do that. We always have the ability to change and evolve. People please us. So many people please us out there. I used to be a people pleaser. I know that and that's why I changed. When I started off with my career, I was nothing. I was one amongst, amongst a thousand, two thousand qualified established nutritionists and doctors. So I thought the only way to get people to know me was to you know, charge them free of cost, spend hours and hours with them, give them my time, not charge money. Even when, when people offered to pay me money, I would say, no, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm just doing it, enjoy it. And I realized until one lady one day told me that, look, what's wrong with you? Don't you value yourself? Don't you value your time? Don't you value the skill that you have? 
Why don't you value yourself? Why are you trying to please people? And I reflected on that. It's because I wanted people to like me so that I could start to get noticed in my profession. And right then I dropped that behavior completely. And I said, there's only one thing I need to focus on, the skill that I have and my one goal, which is everyone who comes to me, I should be able to impact them in either the largest way or if I can't in the largest way, the smallest way. And that's what built who I am today with divine grace, with gratitude, with whatever, by dropping and stopping being a people pleaser. Sometimes that people pleaser thing still creeps up and then you get reminded of the boundaries that you've drawn and why are you trying to be liked and why are you trying? It comes into everyone's life. A child over there who doesn't get attention does things to try to get attention through tantrums. But we as parents label it as a negative behavior. But all the child wants is your attention. Adults throw tantrums, don't we? Don't adults throw tantrums in relationships, through fights, through screaming, through nagging, through silent treatment, because the underlying, the underlying meaning in that behavior is you want attention. And there's nothing wrong with that. Every human being wants and craves attention, acknowledgement, love, and care. And if you don't get it, you will find ways. Sometimes they're manipulative, sometimes they're degrading ways, Sometimes there are ways that lowers your own self-respect and doesn't make you feel happy at the end of the day. So by drawing boundaries, we can sort out all of these problems. Just remember one thing. You are disrespecting yourself when you continue to do things out of fear or out of a sense of obligation. That, oh, he's my husband and I, I must do this for him. You can do it for him. That's beautiful. But is it out of the boundaries you've drawn? Why are you making yourself the doormat? Are you getting anything out of it? Okay, sometimes you may make that extra sacrifice if your partner's going to change, if your boss is going to change, if your employee is going to change. But if you're stepping out of your boundaries, you're only lowering yourself more and more. Now, the beauty of boundaries are the boundaries that we draw today don't have to be drawn in pen. You can draw them in pencil because as we evolve in life, as we, as we learn more, sometimes we can change our boundaries. We can make our boundaries smaller. We can make our boundaries larger. That's up to us because we're constantly evolving. So as our maturity gets stronger and better, we may realize that, okay, I can extend my boundaries because I'm strong enough to handle a little bit of criticism. I'm strong enough to handle a little bit of negativity. So that's fine. Always remember, we will draw our boundaries in pencil because boundaries are flexible. We can change them according to situations. We can change them according to environments, according to what's changing and how we're changing or how the other person is changing. So someone that you've blocked out of your life because they don't come into your boundary, what if they're changing? After a while, they can come back into your boundary, right? Because you've drawn it in pencil. It is absolutely flexible. Another reason why we should draw boundaries is to save energy. Do you know how much of energy we deplete every single day trying to please people, trying to make people happy, trying to do things that we don't like doing, trying to do things that are just not interesting. It doesn't serve us, but we do it for everyone else, putting ourselves down. We deplete energy. How many of us give out so much of our head space and our heart space to people who do not matter, to events that do not matter? Do you know in our culture in India, the whole wedding culture and the party culture? Okay, so many parties, everyone thinks everyone's happy. Do you know how many people at that party do not want to be there? How many people at that wedding do not want to be there, but they do it because of obligation. They do it out of fear. By doing that, you're disrespecting yourself. You are also disrespecting the host of the party by being there when you don't want to be there. The idea of social gatherings, the idea of weddings, parties, is because you want to share joy with people. You just want to be there because oh, if I'm not here, I won't be called for the next party or no one will see my new handbag or my new Rolex watch or my new car and stuff like that. You're only disrespecting yourself. And today our country is full of it. With the amount of parties and weddings and socializing we have, we should think that emotional health is at its highest, but what's at its highest? Depression, feeling low, breakups, suicides, children at children level, teenage level, parents level, senior citizen level. People are unhappy, people are empty because they are working their lives from a space of fear and obligation when it doesn't suit their purpose. So that's another reason to save your energy. Energy is so powerful. Energy that I waste on other people 
or give away where I'm not supposed to be giving is the same energy that can go into growing my hair for my heart, for my liver, for my kidney, for my immune system to help me recover from a disease, which is why a very sick patient who is stressed out is dissipating energy. The same energy that the immune system can use to heal the patient and the disease is now going towards emotional problems and people and jealousy and envy and everything else, which is why an integrative and lifestyle medicine teaching people to relax, teaching people to let go, people to accept, people to forgive. It's for their own good. It's not preaching. It's for your own good. When you forgive, yes, it's difficult. It's for your own good. It's not for the other person because you're renting out your heart space and you're renting out your head space and tons of energy to someone who's already moved on or someone who doesn't care about you, someone who doesn't matter in your life and who's suffering, you and your loved ones around you who have to see you suffering. So we conserve energy by drawing boundaries. When we draw boundaries, we conserve energy. Now we're gonna get straight into the exercise. I hope all of you have your papers and your pens, pencils or pens. I would prefer you to do it with pencil if you can. Okay, on that piece of paper, first let's talk about what we can draw boundaries around. Okay, and these are our spheres. You can write them down. You can do this practice later tonight. You can start paying points right now. So we're gonna draw spheres. Where can we draw boundaries? Health, of course, write that down. We're gonna draw boundaries around health. We're gonna draw boundaries around relationships. We're gonna break down relationships into your partner, whether you're married, you have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, and family, family relationships. Where if you're a parent, you're gonna draw boundaries with your kids. If you're a child and a teenager, you're gonna draw boundaries with your parents. Okay, no need for the egos and prides to go up. Everyone has a right to draw boundaries. By drawing boundaries doesn't mean you're egoistic and, pr and proud. A lot of people, though, draw boundaries and they operate from brown boundaries with ego and pride. Like, I'm this, you can't do this. That's ego and pride. That's not a boundary. Okay? We can draw boundaries around culture, around religion, around spirituality, around your sexuality. You can even draw boundaries there. Boundaries in your relationships. I can guarantee you one thing. One thing. If people get into relationships, you fall in love, you meet people, all great. But before you want to get serious in that relationship, Every man, woman, girl, boy should do the exercise of drawing their boundaries and communicating it with the partner. It is so important for you to understand most marriages today are breaking up. Most relationships are breaking up because in the beginning, while the chemicals and the hormones and everything's at its highest, you don't, you, you don't see anything else. You're blinded when oxytocin is at its highest. You get a kiss or someone's holding your hand or you're physically intimate. The only hormone driving you is oxytocin and you cannot see anything else but pleasure, but happiness, but goodness. You don't see the small little problems that can come up. You, don't, you, you choose to ignore small behaviors. They're not red flags. But once the oxytocin starts to come down, once the dopamine starts to come down, which it will, once the serotonin starts to come into balance, which it will, then you start to see more clearly. So be in love. I wish you love, but draw boundaries even before. You're getting into marriages and all of that stuff. You have to draw boundaries. You don't want to be one year in a relationship and you want a kid and you realize your partner doesn't want a kid. Okay? If you had specialized, if you had specified in the boundaries first that I want to have a child, and that time your partner said, I, I never want to have a child. You have a choice now to change your choice or gracefully move out of the relationship because it doesn't serve you. But getting into that relationship and then sulking is only going to destroy your relationship. So boundaries have to be drawn. If you are the kind of person who doesn't like to go out, but your partner loves to go out, they must be aware of that. Otherwise, you'll be forcing yourself to go out and at some point you'll stop going out and then your partner will say you've changed and then there's conflict. So boundaries help us understand because love alone doesn't work. It's only the movies that makes you think it works, the songs, the trashy TV series that you see that fills your mind with a false sense of what love and relationships are. But we all know that ain't the truth. But then you start comparing your relationship in reality with what you see on TV, with what you see real couples in society pretending to be. And all of a sudden you realize your relationship is horrible. But it wasn't until you started looking and comparing your relationship with everyone else. So boundaries are so important. So now let's make <clears throat> all these fears. We have health, we have relationships, we have family, we have personal growth. Personal growth is also a boundary and we're gonna break down each of these. So now the first step 
towards any boundary, we'll start off with, we take, we'll take maybe health and relationships today, okay? And you can do the rest on your own, okay? The first step is having a crystal clear vision. If you don't have a crystal clear vision of what you want, someone else is gonna decide what is right for you. If you don't have a crystal clear vision of what is okay for you and what is not okay for you, the rest of the world is gonna decide that for you and shove it down your throat. And you'll accept it because you don't know what you want. And after a while, your true self will be struggling to come out. And then you'll be battling in conflict with yourself and everyone else. And then you'll make the change. And then people will say you've changed and you're proud and you're egoistic and you're different. And then you'll have conflict. Ever seen in two relationships where one partner is growing and evolving more than the other partner? That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. These are two partners over here. One partner invests in his or her personal growth, evolves, 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 evolves. The other partner is just happy where they want to be. No problem with that. But now what do you have? You have a gap in between. This gap, there can be conflict, there can be misunderstanding, there can be fights. Oh, you've changed, you've not changed and vice versa, which is why it's always nice for couples to know each other, evolve together, or if the gap is there, and you can respect that gap, accept that gap. My part is different. I want to evolve. My partner's happy where they want to be. Can we respect that? So then the gap can also be healthy. So crystal clear vision. Most people don't know what they want, and that's the saddest part. Everyone thinks they know what they want. When I meet people and I say, what do you want in terms of abundance? And people don't know. And I say, what do you want in terms of financial wealth? I, I want a lot of money. I want to buy a car. I want to buy whatever. No, think abundantly. Think bigger than a car. Think bigger than your child's education. Okay, that's just a small speck of beauty in your life. What about after that? What about when your child grows up and leaves you? So doing reflection and thinking about crystal clear goals. Ask people, you know, what's your work career? What's your business goal? And people will have just the normal answers. I want my business to be successful. I want my child to be successful. I want my career to be successful. No, you know, you're thinking small. You got to think big. What does success in your career mean? What does success in financial wealth mean? What does success in abundance mean? What does success in health mean? So number one, the most difficult exercise is knowing what you want. When I ask young girls, boys or women and stuff like that, like, what do you want from your guy? What do you want in a relationship? I ask the guy, what do you want from your girl? It's the same old stuff. I want honesty. I want whatever. I want him to love me. I want him to, you have to be bigger than that. Specific. You should know how you want to be treated. Everyone's definition of love is different. I have partners who fight all the time. Okay. The wife says my husband doesn't love me. The husband says I love her. In my way, she just doesn't see it. There's nothing wrong. It's just a difference of opinions because no one knows what they want. So when boundaries are drawn and one partner knows that this is my way, this is how I love you. Okay, by giving you little notes, taking you for walks and stuff. And the wife may say, this is the way I like to be loved, by having gifts or by doing this. And then at least you know, right then you know that you still love each other, but the way of expression is completely different. So reduce conflict. But every woman wants a man to love them the way they want to be loved. And every man wants a woman to love them the way they want to be loved. Fair expectation. But it comes with conflict. So unless you've drawn the boundaries and communicated, crystal clear vision of what you want. Crystal clear vision of what you do if that doesn't happen. So if you say you want honesty and someone betrays you, breaks your trust, okay, you should also know what you're going to do. Is it a complete close to the relationship? Is it a complete, is, is there space for understanding? You've got to know, otherwise you react to the emotion. So there are certain red flags. Like I have certain red flags, my red flags to my team, my doctors, my whatever, is punctuality. It's simple. There's no negotiation on time with me because my entire day works clockwork. So I communicate this to my patient. They don't like it. They don't like it when they have four people from my team that reminding them, be on time. Take it or leave it, but that's my boundary. Because if you're late, I will not see you because I have 10 other people to see. So I'm communicating my boundary to you respectfully, asking you to respect it. So that's a red flag I have, okay? All of us have certain things which are absolutely no and absolutely but you've got to know that. So now in the spheres of health, what are your absolute no's, okay? If you don't have boundaries in your health, people are going to say, hey, come on, are you free today? Let's get a coffee. But today you decided not to have coffee, but now you go. 
people say you're, you're doing sugar free from Monday to Friday. But some of that, oh, my friends come after so many years and stuff like that. You have to have your boundaries and say, I'll come out with you, but I won't have sugar today. But I, I can still give you my time. So if you've not drawn your boundaries, because you go ahead and do it, and then you come back feeling like a failure. Oh, I couldn't even keep up to the challenge of no sugar. So again, lowers your self-esteem, lowers your self-respect. You can live an abundant, happy life with boundaries without seeming boring. Okay, people want you to party late out at night, but you have your sleep time. It's a weekday. You know you get into bed at 9.30. That's your boundary. But yet, someone wants you to come out late at night. What do you say? Yes or no? If it's within your boundary, great. If no, no, I'm sorry. We can plan it on the weekend or maybe next time, but I need to get into bed. You build self-respect. You command respect from other people. They try to bring you down. They try to whatever, because everyone wants everyone to vibrate at their levels of frequency. If someone's vibrating at a lower level of frequency, they want you to. They want you to vibrate. They want you to come down to their level because they feel better. You feel better when people vibrate with you. If you are vibrating at a higher level of frequency, you want people to also vibrate. So there's some sync, there's connection, there's vibe, whatever you want to call it. Because when we vibrate at the same frequencies, we have harmony, we have rhythm. And rhythm and harmony is what makes us feel happy. It's what keeps us conformed with life. So you see with people, when you try to start making rules and you start try to start changing your life, you should be ready for everyone trying to find fault, push you down, say, oh, you live only once, don't be boring. If you have your boundaries in place, sometimes you can make them flexible. A friend's coming after two years, of course you can break that boundary for one night, but you should know and you should do it from your heart. Like I said, you can do it from ego and pride or you can do it from your heart. So your health boundaries, what is an absolute no? How do you manage yourself in social groups? Draw your boundaries. If you're used to eating dinner at six o'clock and someone's called you out on a weekday for a nine o'clock dinner, eat your dinner and go. That's within your boundaries. So you can still go, give your time, be there, be present, but you want to eat dinner at that person's place no matter what they say. Drawing boundaries. And as you get stronger at practicing, your self-confidence, your self-esteem, your self-respect increases and you feel a sense of empowerment. You start to learn that you own your inner peace. Otherwise, people are just handing over their inner peace to everyone. And at the end of the day, you feel unhappy. You feel sad. You feel like, you know, I'm a failure. So we got to think about these things. So now that you've got your spheres all in place, crystal clear vision. Know what you will tolerate and what you will not tolerate. And communicate it to your partner, to your teacher, to your boss that, you know, sir, uh, I respect you. I'm thankful for your job, but I don't appreciate the way you speak to me. So please, if we could, you know, if you could change that, I would truly be grateful. Firm and kind. Firm and kind. Oh, you're the other alternative. Like uh, you're, you're horrible. Yeah, I'm going to go to HR. I'm going to make sure that all the employees get together and pull you down. No, it doesn't serve him. It doesn't serve you. You're reacting out of emotion. But the first, you're reacting out of boundary. Someone in your relationship isn't talking to you the right, right way, trampling on you, shouting at you, using negative words, emotionally abusing you, down. Say, these are great points. These are things that are going well, but I will not tolerate this kind of behavior. Please do not talk to me that way. If you want to talk to me, I'll listen to you, but talk with respect. Boundary. If you're a doormat and you take it that way, what's going to happen? They're going to keep on vomiting on you all the time. And when that happens, the fault is actually with you, unfortunately. A lot of men, a lot of women, they do not stand up for what is right because of fear. Fear of what? Is living in fear your entire life living a life? Or is you facing a little bit of confrontation, tension, the willingness to lose if you have to a little bit for a better life, more promising for you? The fault is with you because it is based on the choice that you make. So when you draw boundaries, you get a sense of strength and courage within you. If you don't have those boundaries drawn, you will operate from a space of fear. The third point, use your gut instinct. Today, most people have lost the use of their gut instinct because they're always looking to see what other people are doing. What would she say? What would he say? What would he do? What would she do? Oh, how's he dressing up? Let me copy him. How's she dressing up? Follow your gut instinct. Your gut instinct helps you to draw beautiful boundaries. Your gut instinct tells you right now what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. Don't go on a social media and see that just because some people are okay being emotionally soft. 
that you need to be that way too. Or some people are okay being rude and mean that you need to be that way too. You can listen, you can learn, you can study what everyone's doing, but finally you gotta make your own opinion using your gut instinct, wisdom, knowledge, and experience. It is so important for you to understand that your gut instinct is an intelligence that no one understands. Scientists don't understand it. Quantum physics doesn't understand it. We don't understand it, but we trust it. Your gut instinct would have gotten you through a lot in life, but because you don't reflect, you don't reflect the great things that have happened in your life sometimes happen in that gut instinct decision you made or that gut instinct action that you took. But we don't look at this. We forget about these things and we think it's because of something else. We think it's because of, I am great. That's why it happened. I'm awesome. That's why it happened. It came from you within you. Yes, you are great. You are awesome. But never forget it came from within you. So when you're setting your boundaries, gut instinct is very, very important. Don't look to see how your girlfriends are behaving in relationships or how your boyfriends are in relationships. How do you want to behave in a relationship? What is okay for you if ghosting and stuff is what everyone else is doing, but it doesn't make sense to you? Why do you do it? Why should you do it? Are you a puppet to social media? Are you a puppet to everyone else and what other families are doing? Or do you have your own gut instinct, your own value system? Which brings us to the fourth point after your gut instinct values. Who we are all today or our behaviors are dependent and are shaped by the values that were instilled in us as children. We could have picked up these values from our parents, from our teachers, from our friend circles, from television. So when you build your boundaries, they should also be based on your values. So if honesty is important to you, that's a very strong point in all of your spheres. Okay, it can't be that I just want honesty from my wife and husband, but it's okay if I don't get honesty from my colleagues. No. That's a value. You don't get to pick and choose where to use it. That draws your boundaries. So there are so many other examples of values. There's integrity, there's honesty, there's loyalty, there's kindness, so many different things. So first, reflect on what are my values? What do I stand for? What will I not accept in another person? Okay, what's a, you know, where will I draw the line? Values help you to plan your boundaries. So you should be aware of your values as well. The next point, once you've drawn your boundaries, think about the impact it will have on other people. Very, very important. Because sometimes people get too stringent with their boundaries. It starts to control them. Like I operate only this way. But we operate also on biology, physiology, mysteries of life, miracles of life. So we got to leave a little bit of space. So if I'm making this boundary today, I should also be responsible for the impact it can have on people. So if I set the strong boundary and my partner realizes that, sorry, I don't want to operate with this, I'm shipping out, okay? Think of the impact, very, very important. And the impact can be what you choose it to be, but you gotta be responsible for the consequences. Remember in life, we're free to make decisions, each and every one of us. No one can stop us from making decisions what we want. But also remember that whatever decision you make, you also have to be responsible for the consequence, good or bad. When you're teenagers, your kids want to make decisions and stuff like that, sometimes allow them to make decisions, but reminding them that you are responsible for the consequence. Most kids and teenagers will do what they want, but they will not take responsibility for the consequence. Adults do that as well. Then they want to outsource the consequence to other people. They want to blame, complain, find fault, all of that stuff. No, you made the decision. You take responsibility. Blame is a negative emotion. So when you draw your boundaries, what is the impact your boundaries will have? Maybe it'll have a great positive impact. People will now respect you. You respect them. Everyone knows their place. Everyone knows that this is how Luke wants it. This is how XYZ wants it. Good. So be aware of the impacts of your actions. That's very, very important. Draw your boundaries because it makes you feel good. Protects your personal space. Gives you a sense of power. Do not draw boundaries for ego and pride. I repeat that. Do not draw boundaries for ego and pride. Also, when you draw boundaries, okay, you have to practice them. So learn how to effectively and assertively say no. Learn how to say no kindly, but firmly. Assertively, not aggressively. You have the power to say no. You have a right to say no. So remember, you've got to practice doing that. So someone's coming out of your boundary and say, hey, Luke, can you take on extra work? It's going to require you to work to midnight. I'm really sorry I can't do that because my bedtime's at 
Simple or just a simple no. You don't even have to give an explanation. That won't work for me. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Learn how to say no because you respect yourself. Sometimes there are instances in life where we're stuck in particular jobs, vice versa, all of that stuff, where you may not be able to do all of this, but can you do some of it? That is still progress, okay? Now I'm gonna talk about a couple of rights that we all have as human beings. You have it, I have it. Now, if you don't practice these rights, that's when you become a doormat. And that's where the fault lies with you, okay? I have the right to say no without feeling guilty. I'm gonna repeat that again. I have the right to say no without feeling guilty. I have the right to be treated with respect. I have the right to be treated with respect. Also remember, if you wanna be treated with respect, you must give respect. You can't disrespect people and expect yourself to be treated with respect, but that is your right. I have the right to make my needs as important as the needs of other people. So don't think you're doing a great job by lowering the, the, the focus on your needs and you say, oh, no, 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 I have to look after everyone and then myself last. No, you're not doing a service to everyone. In fact, you're doing a disservice to everyone. If you are in a position to help so many people, you gotta help yourself first because if something happens to you, then all those people that you're helping, whether it's your family, your children, whatever it is, okay, you've done a disservice to them because you don't look after yourself. So you have a right to make your needs as important as other people, okay? It's a people pleaser attitude where you put yourself down in order to put people, other people around you on a pedestal. You don't have to put anyone on a pedestal, anyone. Everyone is the same. You have hierarchy and position for making companies work and vice versa and payouts, that's it. Everyone is the same. I have needs. You have needs. My needs are as important as your needs. As simple as that. Okay? The next right. I have the right to accept my mistakes and failures. Sometimes parents make children feel horrible when they make mistakes and failures. Sometimes your bosses make you feel horrible. Your partner make you, makes you feel horrible when you fail or you make mistakes. You have the right to make and learn from your mistakes and failures. You're not perfect. Show me one person in the world who has not made a mistake. Show me one person in the world who has a clean heart, a completely clean heart. Show me one person in the world who only thinks pure thoughts. Tell me one person in the world who doesn't have the seven deadly sins in them. They don't exist. There are people who will pretend that they are those people. Those are the people you gotta be very, very careful of. Very, very careful of. Everyone has a dark side and a bright side. Everyone has light within them and darkness within them. And there is nothing wrong with that unless you're allowing the darkness to get the better of you. You're allowing the bad to get the better of you. That's when it's bad. That's why self-growth and investment in yourself is so important. And if you know you have certain negative habits or sins within you, what are you doing to improve yourself? What are you doing to make it better? Because human beings have to constantly evolve and constantly get better than who they were and what they did yesterday. If you stagnate, you stagnate. A lot of people say, I don't need anything, I'm comfortable. They're fearful. They're fearful to move out of their comfort zone. Okay, you may be comfortable in a zone, but it doesn't mean you stop learning. There's always hope to learn, to be a better person, to give back more, to do more, to change yourself, all of that stuff. So keep reflecting on that. And the fifth rule, okay, I have the right not to meet other people's unreasonable expectations of me. You know, a lot of people shower you with praise and then they have unreasonable expectations from you. You're a housewife, fine, there are certain expectations. If they're unreasonable, you have the right not to meet them. The same with a house husband, because there are housewives today and there are house husbands. You know what that means, right? The wives work and the husbands are at home. That's great, I think the quality is fantastic. But you need to understand that so many people are built with pressure to meet other people's unreasonable expectations. You have a right not to meet other people's unreasonable expectations of you. Because if you are trying to meet everyone's expectations, you're depleting energy, you're allowing people into your personal space, you're burning out, you're unhappy, your self-esteem and self-respect comes right down, period. That's it. 
That's how simple and important it is for all of us to draw boundaries. And I can promise you, you can change your life between now and the 1st of January because this exercise isn't going to get over in one day. In fact, I request you to take one sphere at a time. So let's say today we're taking relationships with family, okay? Sit down and only reflect on that. Reflect on all the times your family made you feel bad. Why? Did they make you feel bad? Did you allow it to happen? Did you not stand up? Did you not have a voice? Right, reflect and write down everything. Tomorrow do health, day after. But, and then keep reading these boundaries because they empower you. You can walk out there knowing that you have a bulletproof, invisible vest around you, which are your boundaries. Because you don't have to be scared to walk into that meeting. You don't have to be scared to make that decision. You're making it from a space of your boundaries, not from a space of other people's opinions, who's doing what, who's saying what. And that is the importance of boundaries. So let's take an example of relationships with family today, okay? I should be able to express to my parents what I have in my heart in the most respectful way. I should also be able to listen to their point of view. I should be able to accept, let go, understand that my parents are not perfect, that my parents never had training to become parents, okay? All these things in boundaries make them beautiful by allowing for understanding, allowing for forgiveness, okay? So no one in my family should call me when I'm doing X, Y, Z, unless it's an emergency. Written down. That's a personal boundary I have with my parents, okay? Do not call me between this time and this time unless it's an emergency, and emergencies that define X, Y, Z. Now, people will say, oh, but they're your parents. They should call you anytime. No, that may be for you, but it isn't for me. So you see, because everyone is different. And why is everyone different? Because who you are today, like I said, you were molded by values, the time you spent with parents, grandparents, children, in schools with teachers. So what is okay for you may not be okay for someone else. Someone may look at your boundaries and say they're too stringent, okay? but they work for you. You may look at someone else's boundaries and say, oh, wow, you're allowing so many people to come into your personal space. That's okay with them. Don't judge them. If you don't want to be judged, don't judge them. Everyone's boundaries will be completely, completely different, period. So other people may judge you. And when you communicate your boundaries with people, they may not like it. They say, yeah, but you know, his wife allows him to do that. Yeah, I'm not his wife. As simple as that. These are my boundaries. Okay, and sometimes when you communicate boundaries, there's a little bit of understanding, you can change, you can add a little more, you can take away a little bit with understanding, because sometimes we draw boundaries to protect us. So when your partner suddenly says, hey, I never meant it this way, you suddenly realize that I can remove this from my boundary. So make the boundaries, communicate. So I'm going to go over the whole process again. So draw your family boundaries. The same way with your kids. What is okay and what is not okay? To every parent is, I'll let my kid do what they want. They should have freedom. What is the definition of freedom? We all have freedom as a country. How many of you really feel free? Because your definition of freedom is completely wrong. You get freedom when you know you can say no, when you know you can do things the way you want, when you operate from your boundaries. So yes, your kids, fine, you can do this, 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 but these are my boundaries. Don't you ever do this, 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 this. Boundaries drawn, kids are clear. Kids work with clarity. Because if they cross whatever, they always have 10 beautiful excuses to come up with. And then you use, a, you use aggression to say, don't talk to me like that. Don't act smart. Don't be cheeky and stuff. The kid's just being a kid. If you draw boundaries, you can do this, this, this. Fine, you can have one packet of chips, example. But if you have more than that packet of chips, we're going to have a problem. So you're allowing as well as you're defining a boundary. Kids can also have boundaries with their parents. Yes, mom and dad, I respect you. I'll do this, this, this. But I would like you to respect this, this, this. Communicate, understanding. Teach your children and your teenagers to operate out of boundaries. If you don't teach them, guess what? They go into, real, into the real world and allow the world to trample on their inner peace and on their inner personal space. And then they feel lost. They feel so lost. They take the drugs. They take the alcohol. They take the, all the things that you as parents don't want your kids to do. Why? They're looking for a crutch. But strong children and teenagers and parents and whatever, when you operate out of boundaries, you define. Why does the law draw boundaries? That's why the law works in most cases. Airline rules, boundaries, follow them or you don't follow them. You don't board the flight. Simple, you follow them. Boundaries work. 
So try this exercise out. First, do it for yourself. Then include your family members and everyone else. And remember, the boundaries have to be communicated. Otherwise, how do you know? How does your partner know? How does your boss know? Or whatever, what it is. You get feedback from a boss. You can give feedback to a boss as well. I love this about you. Start off with the things you love. And they say, I would really appreciate if this could change and this and this and this. And you speak with kindness and the right tone over aggression. Everything works. Remember one thing in life, the people who speak with aggression, the people who use power and position and wealth to show, they're insecure and very, very weak people. They don't have the ability and inner power to speak or to defend or to get work done. So they have to use hierarchy. They have to use position, power, wealth. I am this. I know this person. I am connected with that person. These are all signs and red flags of a very, very insecure and weak person. Okay. Now, a lot of us today on this call may realize that we have some of those red flags. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you more aware that you need boundaries and that your self-esteem and self-respect is so low that we need to actually push it up by drawing boundaries. So now that you have the spheres in place, now that you understood that your inner peace that you should be owning is dependent on the boundaries that you draw. As simple as that. What you draw to protect your inner peace, to build your freedom, to build more time in your day, happiness, to let go of things, to accept things. Draw your boundaries. Your spheres are health, relationships with partners, boyfriends, girlfriends, relationships with friends, relationship with family members, siblings, parents, parents, kids, your colleagues, your business partners, your sexuality, your culture. Let me, let me touch upon the sexuality part. You have to even draw your boundaries over there. Okay, your partner may have certain sexual desires that are not okay with you. They got to be communicated and vice versa. You can't reach midst of a relationship and then decide, I don't like this. I don't, you know how many marriages fall apart because of sexual intimacy? In the beginning, okay, and this happens two years later. And when I ask, when I ask that particular woman or man who now says, I don't really like doing this, then why did you pretend in the beginning? Why did you send out a false, a false signal to your partner showing that you enjoy intimacy and sex so much when actually you don't? And now mid-relationship a year later, you express this to your husband or your wife. What do you expect them to say? What do you expect them to say if your partner really needs physical intimacy and now you're taking it away because you sent a wrong signal? It's completely different. It's different, of course, if intimacy is low because you're having fights or you're unhealthy and not working out and not sleeping and libido is long. That's different. But I'm talking about the false expectations that couples have and pretend to have at the start of a relationship. So you even have to define your sexuality boundaries your culture boundaries, your religious boundaries. You know how many parents fight, especially if they're married, Hindu, Muslim, Muslim, Catholic, whatever. Forget about the religion. That my kid should do this, my kid. Agree before you have a baby. Draw your boundaries around culture and religion before you have a baby. Otherwise you suffer and your child suffers. And the fault lies with you, with both of y'all, because you didn't draw boundaries. You went on with expectation that, oh, my partner loves me. He'll understand me. She loves me. She'll understand me. That's bullshit. I'm sorry to say that. It doesn't work. Very, very few couples can be emotionally mature to agree and understand at every level and aspect of the relationship. Very few people. Yes, they exist, but very, very, very few people. So you want to be safer and draw your boundaries. There is nothing wrong with drawing your boundaries. It's like a prenup. Today, everyone knows divorces are high. So there's a boundary that you draw that if you divorce me, I divorce you, whatever, this is how much money you get, this is what you get. That's a boundary. That's a boundary as well. So there is nothing wrong. Some people in the name of love, they say, oh, look, why should I draw boundaries? I love, my husband loves me. Well, that's fine. Everything has a shelf life. Finally, love is only an energy. Today, it's love. Tomorrow, it's hatred. Tomorrow, it's something else. Love is only an energy. And it's the way you perceive it, the way it makes you feel. If it was love, how come you don't feel the same way five years later in your marriage or your relationship that you felt in the first week? It's an energy. It can change. It can change with experiences. It can change with your personal growth, with your partner's personal growth, with environment, with, in, with age, with everything. And that is the beauty of boundaries. Draw them in pencil. I'll go quickly over everything once you have the spheres. Crystal clear vision. Crystal clear vision 
of what you want, because if you don't know what you want, someone else is going to define that for you. Once you have the crystal clear vision, know what you will tolerate and what you will not tolerate. What is okay? What is not okay? Draw your boundaries based on your values. What are the top three values important to you? Top three values and make sure your boundaries include those three or five or 10 values. Okay. Once you've drawn your boundaries, communicate them. Communicate, talk about it, send a mail, whatever it is. Use your gut instinct while you're drawing your boundaries. Once you've drawn your boundaries, think about the impact of your boundaries on everyone else. Do you want to change a couple of things? Do you want to hold by it? Do you want to stand by it? All of that stuff. Do not draw boundaries from a space of ego and pride. Once you've drawn your boundaries, practice how to say assertively, no. Be kind, be firm, do not use aggression. And remember your rights. I'll go over those rights right now. I hope someone's written them down or we'll send them to you. I have the right to say no without feeling guilty. I have the right to be treated with respect. And it is also my right to give respect if I want respect. I have the right to make my needs as important as the needs of other people. Okay, I do not have to put other people's needs ahead of mine. I can put their needs ahead, but I must also put my needs ahead. Okay, the next rule. It is my right to accept the mistakes and failures that I have made. I have a right to make mistakes, accept my failures, accept my mistakes and learn from them. I have the right not to meet the unreasonable expectations that other people have of me. Affirm these rights, put them up on your mirror in your bedroom, repeat them the same way if I wake you up in the middle of the night and I ask you five times five, three times six, you get up and you'll say it without thinking. Why? You learned multiplication tables by repetition. What you repeat gets into your subconscious mind. When you repeat these rules, okay, it becomes part of your subconscious mind and then you don't have to remind yourself, you will operate from the neural patterns and neural circuits of your subconscious mind. So I hope this is very, very clear. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Now, the only one thing that each and every one of you have to do is do it. As simple as that. I can guarantee you everything will change. Draw your boundaries. I've sat down with my billionaire clients. I've sat down with football players, cricket players who've reached these levels of success. But even they need boundaries. Even they have to define boundaries and I make them do that exercise and they need it and they feel so good after doing it. So we need it as well. It doesn't matter how much we have. What matters is what we do with what we have in life. So I'm hoping each and every one of you will practice it simple. Today we're on the 17th of December. You have a couple of days from the 1st of Jan. Write down your spheres and be gentle. Reflect, write down, draw your little boundaries and stuff like that. Communicate with the right people. You know, you feel a lot of power when you communicate. And when you communicate your boundaries to other people, do it without fear. If you're doing it without with fear, that means you're still not sure of the boundaries that you want to draw. Okay, so I think we have a, a, another two, three minutes. So uh, if you have any questions, you can just post it. I'll probably answer about two or three. Uh, Taruna, if you have uh, multiple sclerosis, this is not the platform. Please reach out to our team. We need to see reports and we will be happy to help you. So uh, please reach out to our team. What if people have crossed boundaries already? Okay, if they've crossed boundaries, you should also know what to do. Remember, what can you tolerate and what can you not tolerate? So if you allow people to cross boundaries and you don't take action, you've given them permission to break their boundaries. So you, like I said, that third point was know what you will tolerate and what you will not and communicate that. So when they've broken it, communicate. And if it still doesn't work, you have a choice. You have to make that choice, or if you cannot make that choice, you've got to accept what has happened. Okay, uh, Maloney, uh, I'm sorry, I can't employ you right now because this is the wrong forum, but you can reach out to our team. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you for the birthday wishes as well. Sometimes it feels too good, but sometimes while writing, I feel anxiety to write it fast. How should I plan well to write? Very simple. First, reflect. What you want to write on paper, you should first see in your mind. See it in your mind calmly. Set a timeline. One hour is what you're giving or half an hour. Good. Don't be pressurized. First, see what you want to put on paper. You should first see in your mind and then it'll be easier for you to do that. How do you deal with people who only act out of ego? You don't deal with them. You cannot deal with people who have ego because the more you try to confront them, the more their ego inflates to protect them. So you don't deal with people out of ego. You just be yourself with those people. 
You draw your boundaries and you operate out of that space. There are people in your environment who are sick, sometimes mentally, how to deal with them. I don't know what kind of sickness you're talking about, but my experience when you're in an environment with sick people, all the more you have to ground yourself every day with your prayer, with your meditation practice, you with your affirmations of asking for strength and courage to go through what you're going through right now. And of course, action. What is the best I can do? Give your best and that's it. You cannot do more than what you can do. So as long as you're giving your 100%, then you've got to surrender. You cannot be attached to the actions or the results of what is happening. How to communicate without fear? Very simple. You communicate. As simple as that. Okay, if you communicate with fear, you operate from fear, nothing in your life is real. So once you've done those boundaries, practice, 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 feel them. And then you communicate directly without fear. Sometimes fear is a little emotion that will be in us as we communicate, but that's it. That's all you have to do. You have to overcome it. You cannot operate or design your boundaries from a space of fear. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care. It's all about you. It starts with you in the most non-selfish way. It starts with you. If you want people around you to be happy, you have to be happy. If you want people around you to be healthy, you have to be healthy. Okay? Don't put yourself in that sacrificial position where, oh, I do everything for people and stuff. And then those people are the unhappiest because they're just people pleasers. And then people use you, people misuse you. They don't be grateful. And then all of a sudden you realize that you're living with expectations. I do this because I want to be loved. No, do it because it's the right thing to do. Have a great day and a happy holiday to each and every one of you and your families. Thank you.